Greetings and salutations, YouTube. This is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in beautiful San Antonio, Texas. We are downtown over by the Riverwalk showcasing some more beautiful guitars for you. I want to remind you that you can go online, alamomusic.com, find the latest and greatest stuff on our website, and the, the actu accurate prices for all of the stuff we're going to be looking at today. We did two videos pr uh, prior to this one, uh, the top 10 acoustic guitars in 100 to 300 and 300 to 600 dollar range. Today we'll be looking at 600 dollars right up to the thousand dollar mark. Now as we did before we're going to be looking at some travel size guitars, some classical guitars, and some general steel string acoustic guitars both in 6 string and 12 string configuration for your delight. So if you have any questions please feel free to comment below. If you have any uh, snarky comments please feel free to comment below. We welcome all Come all, come at me, bro. Anyways, so first guitar we've got in the mix is this nice travel guitar from Martin. Now we've looked at the new Guild uh, Mini Jumbo. We've talked about the GS Mini before. Starting at the $600 mark brings you to Martin's entry into the foray in the Junior Dreadnought. Now this is a three-quarter size guitar that's a little bit longer scale than a GS Mini, clocking in at 24 inches. It's also got a wider nut at one and a three quarters which for people like me that have chubby sausage fingers is rather comfortable. Or if you need it for picking techniques or something that's more advanced, it's good for that too. It's got a nice PA, uh, kind of shallow oval uh, feeling on the neck. It's a solid Sitka spruce top with their A-frame bracing. It has a Fisherman Sonatone pickup in it. It comes with a gig bag. Oh yeah, and one little thing, it's all solid, which is really a killer feature in this price point. The Guild that we looked at, solid top, laminate back and sides. The GS Mini, Solid top, laminate back and sides. The Junior Dreadnought is the only three-quarter size guitar from a major manufacturer that's all solid wood. And so you get some nice resonance out of it and that typical low-end Martin sound that we all know and love, for those of us who know it and love it. Um, features are pretty robust for the price point that you get. It comes in just above the $600 mark. So the big question, of course, is how does it sound in comparison to the other two? We're going to be looking at another GS Mini in this price point, so you can compare it in the video and see which one you prefer. The feel on this is rather nice, gig bag, it's a Martin, how can you go wrong? Let's check it out. Moving a little bit up on our price point, we come to the next travel size guitar, which is another iteration of the GS Mini. Now this is a somewhat limited Koa model. Now let me qualify that. It's not a limited edition, but these are really only available when the wood's available. So since Taylor added this to the standard lineup last year, we get shipments in when they have the wood to make them with. So they're not a limited edition per se, but they're limited in number just the same. So if you like the beauty and the sound of the Koa, know that it's not always available. Now in the $600 to $1,000 price point, there's actually three GS Minis that are available. Once you add electronics, which is the new ES2 system to the guitar, it crosses that $600 uh, threshold. And the first two models that are available are either the mahogany topped version with sapele back and sides, which are laminate, or the spruce top version with beautiful rosewood, which is laminate on the back and sides, and all with the same other specs that you would come to know from a GS Mini along with the ES2 pickup system. This range topper, the Koa one, like I said, it's available when the wood is available, and it's a solid Hawaiian Koa top with laminate Koa back and sides and the ES2 pickup. Now, I own a Koa GS Mini, and I like the tone of it because it has some of that warm, punchy mid-range that the mahogany has with a bit more kind of treble bite to it. And over time, Koa opens up kind of on the low end side, so it's going to just become more full, and I just pretend or, or tend to like the tone a lot. So let's give it a listen to and see what you think.
Okay, so we've got a 12 string in our lineup, just like we had previously. This is a Taylor 150E. Now, this is probably one of the best values of 12 strings on the market. Let me qualify that and tell you what I'm talking about. Taylor's known for their playability. Generally speaking, you get a bunch of people, particularly guitar aficionados in a room, and you can ask them if they think Taylor's are the best sounding guitars in the world. And some of them are going to raise their hands and some of them aren't because tone is subjective. But you can ask those same guys if they think that Taylor's are some of the best playing acoustic guitars in the world and they're pretty much all going to raise their hands because Taylor is known for their playability. Their necks are silky smooth, their action's really low, it's fully adjustable, the necks come off, get bolted right back on, and that adjustability is built in for the life of the guitar. So they play well. Now you take that and you translate that to a 12 string guitar, you got money. Okay. The problem is that until very recently, until this guitar came out, your entry level into a 12 string Taylor was about $2,000. And that's a lot of coin for a 12 string unless that's maybe one of your main axes. So it was with a lot of excitement that Taylor brought out the 150E. It's an addition to their 100 series and it follows the specs of that series. The specs are that it has a solid Sitka spruce top with scalloped bracing typically. Now it's not going to be scalloped on this one because it's a 12 string. Why? Let's explain that just for a moment. A 12 string, in case you didn't know, has 12 strings on it. A typical 6 string guitar has, you guessed it, 6 strings. Because it's got twice as many strings, it's got a whole lot more tension pulling on the top. Now scallop bracing goes in and removes some of the material on the bracing in order to make the guitar more resonant so that as those strings are pulling on the top and it's causing it to vibrate, it can do so more freely. It's really unnecessary with a 12 string guitar and doing so would probably cause the top to eventually explode under all of the tension. So one of the departures from this compared to its stablemate of the 110 is that it does not have scallop bracing. So it's a solid Sitka spruce top with the tapered bracing. It has laminate sapele back and sides with the sapele neck. It has real ebony for the fingerboard and for the bridge. It's got nice Taylor tuners and it comes with a wonderful hard bag. Now the Taylor hard bag is made by Taylor. You might have seen them. They're these wonderful tan bags with the Taylor logo embroidered on them. They call them hard bags because they're gig bags with a zipper and a backpack strap style, but they are very robust thick one inch padding and you cannot fold it in half or anything like that. So in that way it's almost like a bag and a case, kind of a hybrid between them and it really works well for this dreadnought size 12 string. You also get Taylor's ES2 pickup on this just like we saw on the GS Mini. Now you might have noticed that pretty much every guitar we've looked at so far in this price point has a pickup. And that's what's great. Once you move up to about the $600 to $1,000 price point, you're able to get a nice, good quality, well-built, well-playing, great-sounding acoustic electric guitar that's happy at home on the couch as well as in the coffee shop or at church. So this one, uh, 150E represents huge value for a 12-string with some of the best playability on the market. Pickup system, gig bag, great tone. What more do you want? Did I mention it's only $750? only $750. Now, check our website for the latest pricing because it's subject to change, but that's a huge value. Let's check it out.
we have another Martin at this price point, and this is where the crowding starts to take place uh, between $600 and $1,000. Uh, right at $699 currently is this GPCPA4 model. Now we've got two to, to look at today. We're gonna count them kind of as one guitar because they're basically variations on a theme. This is a limited model that's available this year, which is a GPCPA5 with a Sapele top and HPL Macassar back and sides. So you get this beautiful laminate Macassar uh, grain on this guitar with a solid Sapele top. Now Sapele is an African wood that has in the past been called African mahogany. Now it's not a true mahogany, so that that classification or that description is not necessarily the most accurate, but the reason it's called that is because it has a lot of the properties of mahogany. The grain looks very similar, the color looks very similar, the tone is very similar, but with a bit more high end on it. So when you use it on the top, like in this particular case, it's going to have some of the same traits as a mahogany top guitar, which are a pronounced mid-range with a lot of warmth, but you'll get a little bit more high end on this kind of like you do with a Koa top. Now some of the other features on this particular model that we'll see on both this one and the Spruce one we're going to look at is that it's a solid top with laminate back and sides. It features a, a rich light fingerboard and bridge, which is a man-made material that Martin uses that looks great, wears real well. It uses their A-frame bracing, which is common on all of their laminate guitars. It's got a Fishman Sonotone pickup with controls right here in the soundboard, so there's nothing cut into the side for it and a Stratabon neck, which looks killer and wears really, really well. But you know my opinion, I think it's a travesty that 50 Stratocasters had to die to build a Stratabon neck. That's not true. Stratocasters didn't have to die to build this guitar. But I digress. Let's listen to it and see what you think. We're gonna hear this one, and then immediately after it, we're gonna hear the other one, which is basically the same construction, but with a spruce top and uh, laminate Sapele back in sides, or mahogany back in sides, rather than Macassar. Check it out. So this is the GPCPA 5, which has pretty much identical construction to the guitar we were just playing, which is technically a GCP, uh, GPC X2AE. And they're pretty much the same price point, and they're really the same guitar, kind of with some different, uh, different wood options. Um, and the pickup is a little different. So this has a Fishman's Aura pickup, and that's the primary difference between these two. So same construction, the pickup rather than the Sonotone gets upgraded with an onboard tuner to the the uh, Fishman F1, actually, not the Aura. So, hey, we all make mistakes. You guys can flame me in the comments if you want, but at least I corrected it, and uh, they're both available really at kind of the same price point. Fantastic guitars, and that's the point, right? So let's check this one out. Next, after the 150E, is the rest of the 100 series. The 114CE and 110CE represent the top of the 100 series from Taylor before you move to the 200 series. Now, 
you might be a little confused. We looked at the 114 and 110 in our previous video, which went up to about $600. They also come with a cutaway version, and that's really the only difference. But the cutaway adds a little bit of money because it's some extra labor that's involved in bending the back and sides and just kind of a different feature. So clocking in at right at $799, you get the 114, which is the grand auditorium size body, or the 110, which is the dreadnought size body. We're gonna play both of these back to back so that you can hear a comparison on the video of the tone between them. Generally speaking, here's what I'm gonna tell you. The 114 is the Swiss Army knife. The Grand Auditorium body is the most popular from Taylor. It's a dreadnought body's depth and width with a tighter waist, this part right here. Now that gives you a smaller overall soundboard, which basically causes it to vibrate easier because there's less mass to move. It has really nice pronounced bell-like highs. And it responds well to flat picking, finger picking, or a light strum. The dreadnought, having a bigger soundboard and strung with medium gauge strings as opposed to light gauge strings, gives you a bit more volume and low end and is more geared toward flat picking and light, medium, or heavy strumming as opposed to the 114. So this is a good kind of Swiss Army knife. It does a lot, pretty much everything well, jack of all trades. Whereas the Dreadnought, while you could finger pick it, is more toward your strumming um, and, and flat picking type of music. So let's hear them both. Okay, so we're starting near the uh, top of the price range right. Here's another guitar that comes in at $799. Now this is a new model this year from Fender, and it's part of their Paramount series. Now Fender has been tweaking the recipe for their acoustic guitars for quite some time, and this is the newest uh, option from them. The Paramount series comes in a variety of flavors, and at $799, this is the entry level. So. The Paramount features all solid wood construction. You've got a solid Sitka spruce top. In this case, it's solid mahogany back and sides, mahogany neck, open back vintage style butter bean tuners. You have scalp bracing, this really cool kind of checkered board marquetry for the purfling, as well as the rosette, dot inlays, bound neck, bound fretboard, Paramount inlay up here and a Fishman proprietary system that kind of Fishman and Fender worked on together, which gives you volume, tone control, and a built-in tuner on the guitar itself. They've got a real kind of vintage tone going to them, um, and they come with a hard shell case. So there's a lot of value here. Um, after this, we're gonna look at another option from Paramount, which moves up about $200 in the price point. But uh, you know, it's really a good quality guitar from Fender. Bone nut, bone saddle, I mean, they're made overseas in order to get it to this price point. If they made the same guitar in the US, this would probably be about a $2,500 guitar. So it's a lot of value for the money. So with a spruce top, mahogany's back and sides, you're gonna get a nice mid-rich kind of airy tone, um, a lot of brightness from it as well. It's a good all around guitar. Let's check it out. So if you go up in the Paramount line, you come to the Deluxe series, which is what I am have in my lap right here. This is the Deluxe Parlor Guitar. Now, in the Paramount series from Fender, you have in each kind of tier, their standard model and their Deluxe models, you have uh, options for the finish. So you can get natural, you can get sunburst, you can get parlor size guitar, an orchestra model size, 
um, or a dreadnought size guitar. Now I happen to be really partial to this particular little guitar because it's a 12 fret. And as we all know, 12 frets are just amazing little guitars. So here's what you get. When you move up to the deluxe series, you get this wonderful uh, vintage sunburst optional uh, finish and you get solid rosewood back and sides to go with your solid spruce top. You still get the scallop bracing, um, you get the uh, hard shell case, high glue construction, bone nut saddle, ebony style uh, butter bean tuners, fisherman pickup, and this beautiful paramount inlay that's here on the fretboard and the bridge. Now, rosewood. Let's talk a little bit about it. We've moved from mahogany up to rosewood and we've gotten some nice aesthetic features and so forth, but our price point moved. Why? So rosewood is a very sought after tone wood. Mahogany is a great tone wood as well. And actually mahogany is becoming a little bit more rare than rosewood. But rosewood and spruce is a classic kind of singer songwriter combination when it comes to tone. Rosewood with a spruce top is going to give you a nice bright tone, high highs, low lows, with kind of a scooped mid-range. So it's kind of an upside down bell curve from an EQ standpoint. And that's really good for someone who's singing because your voice is going to fill out that mid-range. So it's a really, really nice accompaniment guitar. And this thing just oozes some kind of like vintage vibe going along with it. Particularly with the, the burst and the checkerboard binding, it just looks really cool. And with a 12 fret neck, what's it do? So 12 frets, let's say this from the get-go. 12 frets how the guitar was originally made. The 14 fret neck was added later on to give players a little bit more fret to play with. You know, get a little higher up on the neck before you hit the body. But in doing that, unless you're changing the scale, when you move this neck two frets out, you're moving the bridge up. So when we go back to a 12 fret guitar, we're taking and we've got the same scale length. It's not a shorter scale. So by moving the neck in, we are moving the bridge down. And by moving the bridge down, we're putting in a different spot on the top. And that means that the resonance, the, the fulcrum point from which all of that vibration moves the top is different. And it's in this big open area. And so what these generally have is a really nice open sound and kind of a, a played in tone. It, they, right out of the box, 12 frets tend to have a tone that's more open and akin to what a guitar 10 years down the road may sound like. And they've also got a great feel to them. So let's check this one out, see what you think. Now we've looked at in our previous videos some models from Cordoba. Cordoba makes a lot of guitars in a variety of price ranges and they are value oriented guitars in this price range. In other words, you get a lot for your money. The one we're going to look at today is the Cordoba GK Studio Negra. Now this is a Gypsy King model in their Iberia lineup. Now that lineup looks at, uh, includes the C5, which we looked at in our last video. It also includes the C7 CE, which is a fantastic guitar with a cedar top and normal depth and so forth. We chose to focus on the GK Studio because it's a unique guitar in the lineup that's more flamenco oriented. It comes with fantastic pickup and really nice construction. So let's take a look at it. The GK Studio Negra comes with a solid European spruce top with laminate rosewood back and sides. It has typical traditional fan bracing, a Spanish heel construction with a mahogany neck, rosewood bridge, rosewood fingerboard. And it has Fishman's prefix blend or precess blend system. So what you have is an under saddle pickup with an internal crown mic uh, mounted under the preamp. And you're able to blend between the two. You can have 100% pickup or 100% microphone or somewhere in between to get a really natural tone, which is great in a live setting. The fact that it's this higher end system with the nine volt underneath and the mic really makes it a value. 
Now it's a little bit of a thinner depth that you can kind of see compared to a normal classical guitar. This has a bit more punch. And again, it's, it's more flamenco oriented. So you have tap plates on the top and the spruce yields a brighter tone. So it really projects well. Beautiful tuners on this as well. The black and gold tuners that this particular model has just really sets it off. And the newer models, uh, or the newer iteration of these, comes with a really nice uh, logo inlaid on the top. Now, it is available in some other f uh, versions of the GK Studio, which we'll throw up on the screen for you. Uh, this is the Negra, which has the rosewood back and sides. The Negra is also available in some limited edition models that may have Zirakote or Macassar Ebony. It's also available in the standard GK Studio, which has laminated Cypress back and sides, um, which has a lighter color to it. So let's give a listen to it and see what you think. So we've got one last guitar that I had to include, and it really is representative of an entire series. And that is the Martin DRS-1, which is part of their Rhodes series. Now the one I happen to be holding in my lap is not a DRS-1, it's a Martin D-15M. The reason I'm not holding a DRS-1 is because they're such good guitars, we're currently out of stock on them, and we couldn't include them in this video. But rest assured, we've got more on the way. Now the Rhodes series is fantastic value because it's a Martin guitar, it's all solid wood construction, and it's built down in their Mexico plant and comes with a hard shell case and a pickup system. And for under $1,000, it's really, really hard to go wrong there. To compare, this D15M, which is built in their Nazareth, Pennsylvania factory, clocks in at about six dollars $800 more than a similar Road Series would. Now, that's not to say this isn't a better guitar. That's a whole other discussion to have. But I couldn't let this video go without discussing one of the best values in there simply because we happen to be out of stock on them. So we've got more coming, and uh, we'll be doing a comparison video with all those once they arrive. Now, I hope you've liked our video. We've uh, done another top 10, and we'll be doing some more up in different price points for you. But we couldn't include every single guitar in this price point that's out there on the market today. So we were able to choose from the lines we've carried, that we've chosen to carry, and based upon our experience and my experience, what I think are really great values, because that's what we're trying to find for you, is the very best guitar for your money in each of these price points. Now, if you have any comments on the guitars we've shot, or you have ideas of what we maybe should have included, please feel free to comment on the video below. If you have questions on any of the guitars, or would like to purchase any of our stuff, then give us a call, send us an email, go online to alamomusic.com, and let us know. We'd love to help you. Until next time, I've been Chris. Have a good one.